more than 2.5 billion people worldwide lack access to proper sanitation. The Blue Diversion Toilet and its business model were developed to bring sustainable and affordable sanitation services to urban slum neighbourhoods in low-income countries. Sustainable and affordable, that sounds like quite a challenge. Why is there a need for a business model? Well, since the toilet is not only a toilet, but part of a sanitation system, we had to figure out how to market it at an affordable price and ensure safe and reliable disposal of the urine and faeces. This required a profitable business model so that entrepreneurs would become interested in starting and sustaining such a sanitation service. I see. The toilet is also a business generator. Yes. Businesses will grow around the toilet and jobs will be created. I'm very interested in this. How will it all work? It is all based on the toilet, which separates the waste that is created. Urine, faeces, used wash and flush water. The water used for flushing and hand washing is recovered for reuse, while a service collects the separated urine and faeces and brings them to a resource recovery plant, RRP for short. There, they are transformed into marketable end products, such as fertiliser. And the fertiliser would be sold, of course. But isn't it dangerous to collect the waste products? No, the toilet collects the waste in sealed containers, protecting the users and the collectors. That is a good design element. Can you explain more about how the toilet is built? Certainly. The toilet components would be made by local companies and they would pre-assemble them into modules. The Blue Diversion businesses would do the final assembly and installation. The toilet is designed to be easily manufactured and assembled and high volume production will lower manufacturing costs. OK. Do you think the toilet and the business model are adequate for urban slums? Yes. For instance, the Blue Diversion toilet is movable, making it attractive to people who don't own land. It can also be installed in existing superstructures. Wow! That saves space and costs. And the business is easy to scale. Easy to scale? Yes. Easy to scale means being able to sell many toilets within a short period of time. Manufacturing many toilets is easy, but selling them and establishing a profitable business in a short time is likely to be difficult. To facilitate this, the business model is based on franchising. The franchiser is responsible for branding, promotion, assembling and installation of the toilet, procurement and installation of the treatment technology, as well as branding and marketing the end products. The franchisees sell the toilet services, collect the urine and faeces and operate the RRPs. Each franchisee would manage up to 150 toilets. Many small sanitation businesses will grow and increase sanitation coverage in areas that desperately need it. Uh -huh. What are the other advantages of franchising? Well, franchising is a proven concept. And because the business people are local and can easily be held accountable, people would trust them to offer quality products and services. I guess there are also disadvantages though, aren't there? Yes. There might be a lack of talented entrepreneurs in low-income countries and it will not be easy to find people to be franchisees. The franchiser would probably have to train and educate them. And the franchisees have to earn enough to stay in the business, as much as they would if they had a mobile phone shop or a solar kiosk, for instance. Interesting. How would the franchisees be paid? Well, they earn income when they sell a toilet service agreement to customers, and they also receive part of the weekly service fee that customers pay for collection of urine and faeces and maintenance. OK. Could you explain who the customers are? Certainly. The main customers are sanitation entrepreneurs, landlords and tenant households. Sanitation entrepreneurs would pay $100 to have a toilet installed and charge users $0.04 cents per visit to use their toilets. From this, the entrepreneur pays the $3.50 weekly service fee. Each week, 40% or $1.50 goes to the franchiser while 60% or $2 goes to the franchisee. From their earnings, the entrepreneur would pay back the initial $100 in one year. 
And how about the landlords? The same. A hundred dollars investment for a toilet and the three dollar fifty weekly service fee. But they could finance this by a small increase in the rents, and their tenants would be able to use the toilet for free. And what about tenant households? How would they afford a toilet service agreement? Well, households would have to work with a local microcredit institute, who would do credit checks of potential household customers to find out if they can afford the toilet. Households who qualify could take out a two hundred and fifty dollar loan that is paid to the franchisor, who gives fifty dollars to the franchisee. The interest rates on the loans would be the prevailing rates. If the interest rate were twenty percent, for example, the household pays five dollars seventy per week for one year to pay the loan back and to use the toilet. They pay only two dollars fifty a week in the second year and all subsequent years. Can a poor household afford that? That, of course, depends on the household. Two families could always share a toilet and the costs. They both would have to qualify for the loan, and each family would pay two dollars eighty-five a week during the first year to pay it back and to use the toilet. They would only pay one dollar twenty-five a piece during the second year and all subsequent years. Summing all this up. Using the toilet would cost less than five cents per person per day. Okay. How would you collect the service fees by sending around money collectors? No. People would make mobile payments, which are very common in low and middle income countries. But still, do you think a poor household can afford the weekly service fee? And would people want this kind of toilet? Our business model keeps the service fee at the limit of affordability in many countries. Our field tests in Uganda and Kenya have proven this. People in these countries also expressed great interest in having a blue diversion toilet. Many find it to be a very appealing product, making us believe that there will be great demand for them. And compared to the $750 cost of building a pit latrine and the $50 a year for pit emptying services. The toilet is very cost competitive. That sounds pretty good, but what about the treatment of the urine and feces and the RRP? Will it also be profitable? Yes, RRPs would be profitable over time. They would be set up only when the franchisees have sold enough service agreements and earned enough from the weekly service fees to finance investing in a plant. Money would also be earned from the fertilizer and end products. The fertilizer, for instance, will be sold to wholesalers who will sell it to farmers. But I guess you will set up one RRP in the pilot phase to test the technology, will you? Sure. We would build a pilot plant to show how it works and what it can produce. Do you have any other questions? Actually, no. But let me see if I get it right. The business model offers the blue diversion toilet to business entrepreneurs, landlords, and households. They have to invest in the toilets either through microcredit or cash, and their investment would be paid off in one year. In most cases, the toilet would cost people less than five cents per person per day to use it. There is a franchising system with a franchisor and many franchisees, and the toilet would be sold in as many places as possible to quickly reach the right scale. The RRPs would be built with the money made from the toilets. The plants will process the urine and feces and develop fertilizer and other products for sale. Is that it? Yes, it is. Excellent. Good luck. Thanks.